Today, we're going to answer a very simple question. How pay to win is Warcraft Arclight Rumble? And what are all of the systems in the game that you might spend on in order to get an edge against some other player? Stick around in this video because I have spent over 100 hours just grinding in the closed beta and I've got a pretty good sense of how this ultimately might work. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming. I have actually spent over $100,000 in pay-to-win mobile games. Most of that is in Rise of Kingdoms, which I play on my main channel. But in today's video, I'm going to use all that experience making my way through these pay-to-win games and also my experience playing Warcraft Arclight Rumble, which is very fun for what it's worth, in order to give you a sense of how this might be a pay-to-win game if it is a pay-to-win game. And ultimately, there are some choices the developers make that sway it one way or the other. So let's talk about all of the systems that you can spend on. And I'm going to start with the cash shop, which is right here in front of you and where you actually spend. The thing that you can buy at this moment in time in the closed beta is gold. Gold is what you use to get cards and leaders. You need cards and leaders to make decks. Now, there's more to it than that. And I'll show you how that works in a second. But gold is critical and is a gatekeeper to your progress. In fact, if you had access to endless gold, you would have access to endless experience on your cards, which is the next thing I want to talk about because cards get more powerful as you level them up. You can buy experience with gold. Following me so far? So in the shop, you can go and buy gold. You then use the gold to get experience right over here on a thing called the grid. Now, I made a detailed video explaining how the grid works, but essentially it's a lottery-ish system for the sorts of things you can spend your gold on. So as an example, one thing that I really want is this Frost Wolf Shaman Stone Skin Totem. It is so good. Uh, at least I think it will be. Uh, and this is something called a talent. Okay, so I said you can buy cards. I said you can buy leaders. But you also can buy talents that enhance the way your cards work. And players that have talents are going to absolutely crush the players that don't. Now, you can get gold free to play. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But the more gold you have, the more stuff you can get. So let's just buy this now so you can see how the grid works. I actually want this from my Frostwolf Shaman. Boom. The card levels up. The more levels you have on your cards, the more powerful your cards are. Obviously, we've got more health and we do more damage. Pretty simple. But there's more because, boom, you see what just happened? I just leveled up. The more uh, you level up your cards, the more you as a player level up. Okay, so I'm not done yet and you're starting to see how this works. Now, every time I do quests, I get more experience. Every time I get quest tomes, they give more experience. And every time I get new units, they come with more experience. Now, this is actually pretty logical because if I've been playing the game a lot and you need higher level units to actually do anything in the PvE style gameplay, then when you unlock a new unit, if they don't give it to you at a higher level, it's basically unusable for like a really long time. So this is the system that makes it so that as your cards level up and as you progress through content, when you get new cards, they come in at a higher level. But it is also increasing your rate of experience gain. This is important. We're going to put this all together. Okay, so now I've leveled up as a player because I unlocked that new talent. But you can see the grid has changed. The row and column that that card was in has now got new stuff in it. And one of the things you can spend gold on is more experience. And there's no cap on the amount of gold currently that you can spend in the grid, which means if you could buy infinite gold, you could buy infinite experience. And infinite experience means higher card levels. And higher card levels means more progression. But progression for what? Let me show you. If you make your way over to the PvE campaign, missions are harder or easier based on the level of your cards. You can see these green missions are colored that way because the game's telling you, like, that's easy. You should be able to beat that. This mission is yellow because it's like, eh, I mean, you should win, but it it's going to be a little more of a challenge. And then some missions are just going to be, like, orange and red. These are, like, actually more challenging missions. You should not expect to win. 
but leveling up your cards means you can progress through the PvE campaign further. And progressing through the PvE campaign further means you can ultimately start to get access to some more stuff. Now, what stuff exactly I want to talk about, um, a part of what you're getting here is first win rewards. So when you beat a quest for the first time in the PvE campaign, you get a bunch of gold, more gold than if you go back and beat it again using a different style of deck. So you can beat every single mission in the PvE campaign with each style of deck. What do I mean by style? Like Blackrock, Horde, Alliance, okay? I guess I mean faction, whatever. So you can beat it multiple times, and often the top reward is actually better than what they give here, like 90 gold. Why is this mission worse? Maybe they... Maybe I've advanced so far through the campaign in the beta that they haven't actually put the better reward. But usually on like the boss level, you get something more valuable than you'd get on any of these other levels. But the real question is, do you get anything by going further in the PvE campaign? And there is a level, the Anixia level. The Anixia level gives you a special reward. It unlocks the deep breath spell. I have no clue what this does. I have no clue how good it is because I haven't got there yet. But if there are things that you unlock by virtue of being further in the PvE campaign and you can buy your way to progress in the PvE campaign, I'm just pointing out that that is one aspect of pay to win. But the most important thing is, what if you fight other players and how does that work? Well, there's a couple things that are absolutely critical. And what matters the most here for PvP, which you can see IQ for that just in the bottom right, okay? The thing that matters for PvP is the levels of your cards and if... They normalize the levels or not. Currently, when you queue up for PvP, everybody is level one. All the cards, everything in your deck. And if I show you my deck here, there's a bunch you can upgrade. If you're all equalized at level one, it doesn't matter. With one exception, I showed you talents at the start, which customize the way cards work. That's really, really important. So as an example, this meat wagon is actually busted with this one talent. And I think they're going to nerf it. I hope they don't, because it's really good, but I don't know, we'll see. The meat wagon, um, meat and bones, makes it so that when your meat wagon shoots, it spawns a skeleton. Every time it hits, it spawns a skeleton. It's actually out of control. You make a whole skeleton army with this thing. It's really powerful. Now, there are easy counters to this, but my point is that there's a sort of base level check of do all your cards have talents? Let's start there. And if you do, you will perform better than somebody who doesn't have talents. You're going to wreck them. So even if they normalize the levels... Talents are obtainable over time. Like, you can do that. You can get your gold free to play. You can do quests, which show up three times a day. Right now, for me, it's like 1 a.m. Not that I ever stay up to do the quests at 1 a.m. 9 a.m. and like 5 p.m. are like the three times that I'll get something else over here. Where basically, if you do PvE quests or PvP, you can free to play grind quest tomes and gold. So you can do this over time free to play. But... If they don't normalize the levels, bro, and I show up with like all these super high level cards and I'm fighting against people who don't have super high level cards, like you're just going to wreck. You're just going to absolutely wreck people. And I'm not even done yet because there's yet another system where you can go and upgrade the leaders in your deck. What does that mean? So when you do the PVE dungeons, and this dungeon is currently closed, it is a five day open window right now and a two day downtime but when the dungeon is open you get that currency you see all the way in the upper right i have 640 of it i don't know what it's called i think we'll just call it leader currency you use this leader currency to upgrade your leaders okay so how does that work upgrading your leaders makes it so that cards you put in that slot are one level higher than they would have been otherwise so it's yet another way to sort of level up a particular deck so for example if I put a Blackrock card in that slot that's selected, um, this, this gray one over here, it is going to have two levels more because I've leveled that thing up twice, okay? If I go to this, uh, I don't know, bottom right, I'll show you this one, this flying slot. If I put a flying card there, right, that copper color indicates it's going to get one more level. And because I maxed out my leader, it actually gets three more levels. And there's a sort of lottery at this moment in time for different upgrades that are actually available to you based on using your leader currency, okay? So you can buy your way 
to card experience. Card experience means you can do harder and harder levels of PvE, which in the dungeon means you get more leader experience, and that leader experience you then use to level up your deck, which is all really good for PvE, and it will matter in PvP if and only if they don't normalize all the levels, which they do currently when you queue up for PvP. By the way, the cost of these upgrades to your deck start really, really low and get much, much, much higher. Like, I need 2,400 of this currency, and again, you get more and more of this currency the higher level of dungeon you're able to complete. Well, if I make my way back over here, you can see other decks I haven't upgraded, right? If I go to my Tyrion deck, I equip that. Like, it's just vanilla, right? No upgrades. There are three base slots that come with the deck where if you put the desired card type in there, you get the bonus. So as an example, this particular card, Blizzard, is, I think it's Elemental, is what they're looking for here. If I tap this, oh no, they want Alliance. Obviously they want Alliance. Come on, bro, keep up. They want Alliance, that is fulfilled, it gets plus one level. Over here, this card, also Alliance, this is, I think, Tank. Yep, that's fulfilled. And to just switch back to a deck that you can see where I've made some upgrades, I'll scroll down over here. We equip this deck where I've made a bunch of upgrades. Um, you can look here, this is getting plus three levels on my Blizzard, right? Plus one level on my Gargoyle, plus two levels on my Meat Wagon. I guess this is because it's undead. You get the idea. So these upgrades require you to have a card of a specific type to fill that slot, and then it has the extra levels. So tying this all in to the cash shop in Warcraft Arclight Rumble. At this point, what can you buy? Well, you're actually throttled on a weekly basis, and you can only spend 24 bucks a week, plus occasional pop-up bundles that you get for progressing through the PvE campaign. Those pop-up bundles have, in my experience, all lasted for two days and are extremely high value when compared to what you can actually buy over here. These are the offers that refresh every Sunday. In addition, there was an experience and gold booster. It was like 20 bucks and a one-time purchase, and I think I get something like 50% more gold and experience for like, I think it was everything I do. I don't know that I can actually check anywhere where that buff is now applied to my account. Uh, but like definitely is hugely helpful to be getting more gold and experience from everything that I'm doing. So tying it all together, in the cash shop, you can buy gold. You can also get gold free to play. However, if they don't have a constraint to the amount of gold you could buy, you could then go in and buy endless amounts of cards until you've got every card, talents until you have every talent, and experience until you've technically leveled up all your cards. The more levels you get on your cards, the more player level that you get. The more player level that you have, the more experience you get from doing grinding in the game. That grinding is done over here on the campaign screen, both for PvP and PvE, you get more experience every time you queue up. But also, by virtue of having higher card levels, when you do dungeons, you get more leader experience because you can do higher level dungeons. You use that leader experience to then make your decks more powerful so that the cards that are in specific slots and the leader themselves are actually higher level because you've made those upgrades. Now, if you're in the end game fighting against other players who have the same things you do, the only thing that's going to matter is skill. The reason that card levels are primarily going to be a differentiator is when you're fighting against players who don't have all the same card levels as you, who don't have access to the talents that you might want to have access to that you've spent gold to obtain. And at this moment in time, not all talents are created equal. I mean, some are way more impactful than others. And although for my main decks, I have unlocked the majority of the talents I want, this is one of my favorite spells, Blizzard. And I don't have a talent for this thing yet. And it is a difference maker for sure. It is like the thing I critically need to win or lose against a certain card. If I actually had this right here on deploy, freeze affected enemies in place for three seconds, this would be absolutely game changing. Going from I lose to this deck every time I play it to I win to this deck or verse this deck every time I play it. So talents are absolutely crucial. And just to clarify that a little bit more, how can that possibly be the case? This card over here is called the Banshee. The Banshee goes and takes control of an enemy card. And if the enemy takes control of one of your cards that's really high cost to deploy to the board, you lose. It's over. You're done. Forget it, bro. 
But if I can freeze them in place, right, if I'm fast enough to react, I actually have a shot now to actually protect my high power cards, right, my high cost cards by freezing the enemy and then, you know, I can kill the Banshee really easily. Woo! So all that to say, at the end game, I think the competitive scene is going to be all people with max cards, just like you would see probably in Clash Royale, right? Where you have to have like max cards if you want to push on a leaderboard and compete. Um, and some amount of gold can get you there. Now, how much gold are we talking is a really interesting question. I don't know what the max level of the cards is. And I will say, though, the amount of gold that it takes here to get extra experience is actually really low, like 50 gold compared to the uh, 350 gold to unlock a card or compared to the 500 gold to unlock a talent, as an example. And I assume that once you've unlocked all the cards and all the talents and all the leaders, leaders cost 400 gold for whatever that's worth, um, that every time a slot shows up here, it's going to be one of these 50 gold experience boosters, which gives a moderate amount of experience. There's a lot still that we obviously don't know about this game. As an example, raids are not here yet. Coming soon. I don't know how that's going to work. Could be a PvE style battle where you do damage to something and your whole alliance sort of gets credit for the cumulative damage each of you deals to it. That's typical in mobile games. Think Raid Shadow Legends or Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes on that one, but I don't actually know. I'd love for it to be a thing where we're all playing at the same time doing something. That'd be freaking sick, man. And overall, the game is fun. I do enjoy playing Warcraft Arclight Rumble for whatever that's worth, and I'm kind of eager to see like what actually will the end game of PvP look like. That will largely determine how much does it even really matter to have max cards or not? Equalize the levels, and it may not matter all that much, and you could take your time and be equally competitive once you have access to all the talents that you want against players that are completely maxed out and spending lots of money. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'm enjoying my time in the closed beta for Warcraft Arclight Rumble so far, and obviously I've been a... A bad gamer letting my quests accumulate here. The way that this works is you basically compete or complete three PvE or PvP style quests. Once you've done that, you unlock the item here. Sometimes you have more rare quests, which give you more bubbles of experience. Yeah, you gotta love the references to World of Warcraft here. That is kind of well done. And if you over experience but have multiple prizes available, it'll actually still count that toward your next prize that, that's available here. So once I've cleaned out those three prizes, there will be zero listed here. It'll show the times when new prizes will be available. And also, I can still get my max of three bubbles of experience once I've cleared out all the prizes so that the second something new drops, I can pick that up. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts. And until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.